who lives in a pineapple under the sea. Sorry I got carried away, Nickelodeon, please don't sue me. Hey guys, welcome back to Spike I'm Kai and today we're back once again taking a look at how I made this cool motion graphic animation uh, here in Blender. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's drag a box over top of our cube and our lamp and hit delete on the keyboard. You guessed it, they're out of here. Let's go ahead and left click the camera, hit alt R to clear rotation and alt G to clear location and then hit R X nine zero on your numpad and then hit enter to confirm that movement and once that's done we can hit g y to move the camera backwards and hit zero to go back into the camera's view nice once that's done let's go ahead and hit shift a and we'll search for a text object and hit rx nine zero on your numpad to rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis of course and left click to confirm that now we can go to the text tab here on the right hand side and change the font um, behind this little folder icon, once we open up the font uh, section right there, boom, folder. I'm going to go to my fonts folder and I'm going to search for a font called Comic-E, because that's what I want to use for today. Open that bad boy up. And now we have a font, we have a text. Nice, easy, we're done. Congratulations, thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm joking. Okay, let's hit tab. So go into edit mode and hit backspace a couple of times to get rid of that. And then we'll just type something that we want to type, which is going to be pop, like that. Then hit tab to go back out of edit mode. And next thing I want to do, the final thing I want to do for text wise, at least, is let's go ahead and go scroll down to the alignment section and then change the horizontal from left to center and then the vertical from top baseline to middle. Nice. That seemed like a lot for just text, but it uh, but once we have it done, it is done and we don't have to do anything with the text anymore, which I'm happy about. So. Now, once that's done, let's go ahead and give it a material real quick. So let's go to the material tab, hit this little drop down, add material, uh, add the material to it. Uh, and then we can change the surface from principal BSDF to emission. And now we're looking good. I'm going to go to the world tab and then change the color to black. And then I'm going to go to the main tab and change the color management to um, to standard because it by default it's on filmic. So if I, t if I take a look, you can see this is on standard. So the color is actually white and black. But if I put it on filmic, it gets like grayish. And I don't want that because I want it to be like, you know, actually white. So we, we're going to turn that off for today. Nice. Once that's done, uh, we can open up our timeline here and actually start some animation, which is the fun part. So let's go ahead and get started on that, which what I want to do is we're, go we're going to go ahead and go to the main tab here first, or the second tab rather, and then change the frame rate from 24 to 60 because it's so important when you're doing motion graphics to make sure you're, d you're animating in 60 frames per second or else it just won't look as smooth and as like fluid. Um, which motion graphics are literally all about. So it would just look a little strange if you're, you know, animating motion graphics in 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second or something. So make sure you're in 60. Um, and then once we're, we have that, we have that done. I'm gonna change my start frame to zero just because it's a pet peeve of mine. And then we're gonna go to the zero frame. Um, and then I'm going to kind of. I'm gonna see how many frames I want to go out. Maybe about like 10. And then I'll double tap R to rotate this and then R Y to rotate it up like that. I'm going to turn on um, automatic uh, keyframing. So we're just going to kind of rotate that to this position, I suppose, and make sure the scales right. So hit S on your keyboard to add a scale, hit R to, on your keyboard to rotate it and then hit G to move it around. Um, I'm going to go back to the zero frame here, rotate it a little bit more like that, you know, and then hit S. Um, zero to scale it to zero so it like, completely disappears left click to confirm that and then when we play this it like zooms up which is really cool you know it looks really cool um, nice so after that on maybe about like frame 50 I wanted to keep like moving in that direction so we'll kind of rotate it a little bit so it's like smooth and we will um, play that back okay so there we go I also wanted to like rotate more towards the camera nice Oh, yeah, that's what I want. Cool. Sweet. So once that's done, I do want this to get a little bigger, though. So on frame 10, I might hit S to scale it up a little bit. So it has somewhere like to uh, wait I'm, on frame 20. I'll hit I uh, scale. And then on frame 10, I'll pull it up a little bit. So it gets like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, like gets bigger for a second when it when it first comes in, which is which is nice. Maybe even bigger. Yeah, there we go. OK, cool. Nice little pop. Um, sweet. And then I think actually I want to make this a little bit more than 10 frames. Nah, it's not popping as much anymore. What if I even made it closer? Eh, 
that's too much. All right, so once that's done, we can go ahead and do the cool little particle bits that kind of fly off, I guess. I don't really know how to describe them, but they're kind of like, you know, just motion lines, I suppose. So let's hit Shift A and we'll search for a mesh um, plane here. And what we can do is hit RX 90 on the key on the numpad. Uh, and then we'll give it the same material that we had before, the all white. And then we'll S, hit S to scale it down. I'll turn uh, automatic uh, automatic keyframing off so we don't just add a bunch of keyframes for no reason. Um, and then hit G to move it up here. Um, tab to go into edit mode. And then only select the bottom two vertices. And hit S, zero to scale those to absolute zero, zero, zero. Left click to confirm that. And now you can see we have two uh, we have two of these little bad boys on top of each other. So the way we can fix that is by selecting one of them and then hitting delete vertices and as you can see and as you can see when we do that it kind of like gets rid of that vertice but it makes it so that this is hollow now like it's not an actual face it's not a plane anymore it's just like you know like an angle so we can fix that super easily by just going and drag up dragging a box over all of them or double tapping a until it's all orange and then hit f on your keyboard and it'll create a face in 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 that little space that you've just uh that you've just given so it's looking good ladies and gentlemen it's looking good now once that's done, let's go ahead and uh, hit tab to, to go back in edit mode, or stay there rather. Make sure everything's orange, double tap A, or just select it all in the box. And then hit G, Z to move this bad boy upwards, and zoom all the way in until you can see the very tip of this. I want to touch the tip of the, um, of the other little dot that we have here as well, the origin. So I want those to be on the same place, which is nice. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and drag these top two vertices up a little bit and scale them in a little bit. Like that, nice. And now we can do the cool part. So on about frame maybe six, I'm gonna rotate this. I'm gonna rotate this like this. Hit G, scale it down a little bit. And okay, we're gonna go I. Or actually, we're, we're gonna turn we're gonna turn automatic keyframe back on. So on frame six, uh, we'll add in a scale. Uh, hit I, rotation I, location. And then on maybe about frame 11 with G to move it up here and then we'll rotate it around you know and then it has to scale it up like that so it kind of like pops and on frame 0 we'll make sure it's 0 oh, S S for scale and then 0 nice okay so with that done oh I don't like how it just like randomly okay yeah that works that works that works okay so pops in it's down here when it starts off and it pops in cool and then about frame like 30 maybe i'll hit g to move it up some more and then we'll hit s to scale it all the way down to zero once again i location uh oh, we don't need that we have automatic keyframe on okay so once that's done we have something looks like this which i like a lot it looks really cool and I think we need to add some more, which is what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and duplicate this bad boy, which is going to, it's going to be a little bit of a hassle because we have uh, keyframes on the, this little popping line thing that we just made. So we have, what we have to do to get around that and being able to move it, because if we were to just hit G and move it over here, you can see what would happen. Oh, you see what would happen is when I play the animation, it would just pop back to over, being over there. So we have to add in a shift A uh and we'll search for shift a uh plane axis and then we'll hit g to move that to the, basically the point of th this little uh thing we're making here this little this little triangle thing so we'll hold down shift and select the little slice of pizza and, the, and we'll select the empty axis afterwards and then hit control p and set parent to object now when we, this moves it'll move along with it um i mean the the when this little axis moves then the pizza will move with it so let's hit shift d to duplicate this and move it over here and we'll just you know rotate it around a little bit something like that and when we play this you can see that it definitely does play from where it is supposed to be playing from it does not go back to where it was which is really nice um and i think i want to make that one a little bit more Okay, that looks, that looks nice like that. And I want to do one more down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and oop, let's go ahead and uh, grab both of these, duplicate, and then we'll just move it down here, thusly. And there we go. Nice. Okay, so there's something. Oop, so there's uh, something really nice about being able to being able to um, 
customize this so much. Like I said, there's so many things you can do, so many different little effects that you can make. And the great thing is, is if I want to go ahead and change this color, I just hit this little five button and then I can just make this one like, you know, green or something, you know, and I can make all of these also green as well. So that is very cool. And if we play as you can see, we have something like that and it kind of pops out and it looks really good. And we have those nice little effects coming off of the word pop which is really cool. So like I said, if you want to see any more motion graphics, this is super, super simple. If you guys want to see any more motion graphics, do let me know down below as always. You can turn some bloom on, you know, get some, get some blooming going. But yeah, I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Um, but until then, bye-bye.